Hello everyone, welcome back to another GIS Mathematics lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on what does an identity matrix look like. And I want to go through a concrete example. So to sort of recap what we left off with before, right, we said that we have some square matrix A, right, square being important, and square just meaning that the number of rows and columns are the same, right, times, and we had this thing that we were calling I, which we called the identity matrix. And the whole point of this was that this identity matrix is the matrix equivalent of the number one, so that if we multiply A by the identity matrix, we end up getting A back, right? Again, this is the definition that we are proposing here, that I is the matrix equivalent of one. So let's go ahead and quickly go through an example where we have some concrete, we're gonna go through this algebraically, but it's gonna be a little bit more concrete than these sort of variables here. So let's say that A is a two by two matrix with values A, B, C, and D, okay? We're gonna multiply this again by some unknown matrix I, we don't know what this is yet. And then the idea is that we're going to get back that same matrix, right? A, B, C, D, right? This is what it means to say that we have a matrix, a square matrix times I giving us back the same square matrix, right? We have a two by two matrix multiplied by this unknown thing here and we're getting back the same square matrix, but right? we have the same elements in the same positions, okay? So what do we know before we do anything else? What do we know? We know in this case, right, that the two, the input matrix, we've said, right, this is a two by two matrix. It's square because the rows and columns are the same, and we've defined, we've defined this matrix. Right? A can be any square matrix. We've defined this one as two by two. We also know that because of the definition we're working from here, that the output, right, the thing over on the other side here is also a two by two, right? We know this. This is, I'm just reiterating the fact that A and A are the same. So what do we know about I, right? Given these two pieces of information, what do we know about I? Well, in order for this multiplication to even be valid, right, based on our definition of matrix multiplication from the previous module, right, we know that the inner dimension has to match. So we know that this has to be two, right? In order for this multiplication to even be valid, right, we know that the number of columns in the one has to match the number of rows in the other. So we know that to be true. Okay. The other thing we know is that the output matrix is a two by two matrix. And we know, again, based on our matrix multiplication definitions, that this two right here, right, this two right here, is coming from this two right here. And so we know that this two right here right, has to come from this number right here. And so in order for that to be true, right, that means that this also has to be a two, right? All I've done is follow the laws that we set out for matrix multiplication, that the inner dimensions have to match and that the output dimensions are the other two dimensions. So I've just taken the information that we know is true and backtracked to get the dimensions of I. Hopefully that made sense. If you don't understand how I did that, pause the video, think about it, go back, rewatch the step. Um, hopefully it's pretty straightforward, but again, it assumes you have a good understanding of matrix multiplication, but hopefully that makes sense, okay? So now let's go ahead and move forward with this idea here of what we do with I. So I'm gonna rewrite our matrices down here. So we know that our first matrix is A, B, C, D. 
right? And we know that our output matrix is going to be A, B, C, D, right? We already know this. This again, this is just the definition from up here. I'm going to put I now, I'm going to make I a two by two matrix because we know that it is, right? We've, we've figured that out up here. So hopefully this part doesn't confuse you. I really hope it doesn't confuse you. I'm going to put some temporary things here. I'm going to put X1. I'm going to put X2, X3, and X4. Right, because right now we don't know what I is. We just know that we have to multiply this two by two matrix with known elements by this two by two matrix that we know nothing about other than its dimensions to end up with the same two by two matrix as our input. That's all we know, okay? So let's walk through for a second how we would get this output given this input and this set of unknowns, okay? And what I want to do is I want to walk through the, ma the matrix multiplication involved here. So hopefully you have a good understanding of matrix multiplication and you can follow along. If not, I, if, if after you see this step, it seems confusing, go back, rewatch the matrix multiplication videos until you get a really good understanding of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay. So let's focus now on this position right here the A element in the output matrix, right? What does this value represent? This value represents the multiplication of this row times this column, right? Again, this is the matrix multiplication that we talked about previously. So we know that this is equal to A times X1 plus B times X, or sorry, not B, right, plus C, right, because it's this row times this column, plus C times X2. Okay? So hopefully you understand where these numbers came from. This is just the matrix multiplication for this element, okay? So we know that A times X1 plus C times X2 has to end up, right? This has to end up giving us A, right? Because that's the element that we have here. So hopefully you can see here that in order for this to work, This has to equal 1, and this has to equal 0, right? So in this case, right, we know that x1 is 0, and x, or x1 is 1, and x2 is 0, right? So we can, underneath here, Right. We know that x1 is 1 and x2 is 0. Okay. So let's talk about how we get this element here. Right. Well, this element here is equal to this row, right, BD times, or sorry, this column BD times this row x1, x2, right? So we have b times, again, x1 plus d times x2. Right, and again, we know that 
this needs to give us B, right? Because that's the result, that's the element that we have here. So if we do that again, right, this is further proof that in order for this to work, right, X1 has to be 1 and X2 has to be 0. Right? So again, this is further proof that X1 is 1 and X2 is 0. So let's talk about Z, or, sorry, C. Let's talk about C. All right, what is C? C is this row times, or sorry, this column, this column, AC, times this row, X3, X4. Right, so we know this is equal to A times X3 plus right, C times X4, All right, and we know, right, this has to give us C, right, that's what this means for this element to be C. So if we think about this, right, X3 has to be zero, right, because that's the only way that this works is if X3 is zero, and x4 is 1. Right, so if x3 is 0, x4 is 1. Right, so we've completed our matrix, right? We have all of the elements filled in, but let's just confirm this with D. So what is D here? Right, D is going to be this, vec this column, BD, times this row, x3, x4. So this is going to be equal to B times X3 plus D, right, times X4. And we know the end result of this has to be D. And so we can confirm here, the only way this works is if B is equal to zero and X4 is equal to one, right? Which matches what we got here and it matches what we have here, okay? So this right here, this is our identity matrix, right? This is I. For a two by two matrix, right, regardless of what the numbers are, right, our identity matrix is always gonna be one, zero, zero, one, okay? We're gonna talk about this more generally in a short video, um, cause I wanna stop this here because I think this was a lot and I wanna make sure you take a minute to sort of think about everything, figure out how we went from all of these X's through the matrix multiplication to give us this. So please take a minute, think this through, figure out how I went through all of these steps. If they don't make sense to you, please reach out. Thank you.